Hi, everyone. Oh, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I am the CEO and founder of Clean Machine Plant Based Natural Fitness Solutions. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my <laughs> favorite old time excuses metabolism. All right, before we get started, uh, please understand that this video is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I'm going to be uh, talking about a study that came out in August of 2021 last year. Now, it's a, it's a pretty big game changer because I don't know how many of you have heard that, hey, you know, I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 60, my metabolism slow, that's why I'm gaining weight because I'm eating the same thing. And uh, as I always have, and I'm gaining weight now. Why is that? Okay, so let's, <laughs> you know the old adage, if you are looking for excuses not to do something, you will find them. <laughs> that is our mind uh, looking for uh, ways to avoid uh, doing something like exercise or changing our diet or eating better or healthy. So let's go down some of the typical excuses. Uh, number one, it's my genetics, okay? We're in an age of now we understand epigenetics, epi meaning over and genetics, meaning that we have epigenetic things that can change our genes in real time. That's right. The, when we eat, when we laugh, when we are having fun, when we exercise, we engage epigenetics, which switches on or switches off genes that do a whole host of different things in our bodies. So genes are no longer seen as fatalistic, like you're doomed because you have these genes. No, well, you can turn most of them on or off or even adjust or change them through what's called adaptive alleles. Adaptive alleles are kind of like a uh, app <laughs> that you load up on your DNA that uh, gets you to uh, include some more functionality to your genes, gets you to do something else is we have an adaptive alleles for lots of different things as our life changes, as our dietary choices change. Uh, one good study on epigenetics found that a single meal or changing a simple diet, dietary choices can change up to 500 different epigenetic factors in our body. So don't blame it on the genes. Yes, there are a few things. There are a few things that are genetically predetermined. Uh, which would be genetic mutations, which are hard mutations that come with birth, birth defects, that sort of thing. Yes, those are unchangeable. But that, by most accounts, is about 2 to 3%. So you got 98% of people not being about genetics. So chances are you're in the 98% for most of you. All right. Uh, it runs in my family. No, it doesn't run in your family. You're just repeating the habits of your family. You're eating like you, they do. You're exercising or not exercising like they do. And that's the habit that you're repeating that it gets it to run in the family. You change your habits. You change your lifestyle. You change your health. Oh, I'm too fat. I can't lose weight because I'm too fat. Hey, there's a little bit of truth to that, but everything can be overcome. Look, fat is just the accumulation of calories, specifically fat calories in the body. You can unaccumulate them just like everything. If you have money in the bank, you can accumulate it. And if you spend it, it goes away. Same thing with body fat. It's just fat. Think of fat as your bank. It's a storage bank for calories. It's the way the body says, hey, wait a minute, you're going to go through, hey, uh, I've got plenty of calories available. Oh, it's a drought. I've got no calories available. So the body will store some of those calories and say, that's no worries. We got backup supply of calories. We'll hang on to you. Now, if you're regular intaking calories, healthy calories, right calories, not too heavy on the fat, and you're regularly outputting the calories, doing regular exercise, your body will say, eh, okay, regular coming in, regular going out, we don't need to store so much. And that's how you can get a better fat balance. Remember, it's all about surplus of calories stored as fat, and that's what it is. Okay, so it's not about being too fat. You can start any place and at any age. Oh, which leads you to, I'm too old. Yeah, 
So I've heard that. Look, I'm just about to turn 60 in less than six months. Yes, 17 inch arm, still champion, natural bodybuilding champion, physique athlete. No excuses. Come on, man. Let's stop with the excuses. If you don't want to do something to say, I don't want to do it, but don't make excuses. Or the I am eating healthy and exercise. Mm, no, if you were, you would have a different physique. <laughs> it's just the way. Look, your body the way it is, is a representation of what you put in it, food-wise and nutrition-wise, and what you put out of it, which is exercise or activity levels. That's what it is. It's a reflection of those two things, mostly. Yes, stress has an effect. Clean water has an effect. Uh, loving relationships has an effect. Dean Ordish did a great book, covers all those different five effects. Stress, uh, relationships, water, sleep, and diet, as well as exercise. Six things. I think that's great. Okay, let's get to this study. Boom. What does the study say? Well, here, let me put the study up on the screen for you. There it is below. Sorry, borrowed that from uh, one of my favorite uh, financial gurus out there. Just breathe Singh. Uh, August 2021 study, Daily Energy Expenditure Through the Human Life Course. Now, this is really interesting because most of the people are under the assumption, if you ask them, hey, my, I'm in my 40s, my metabolism slower. This study actually says, uh -uh. <laughs> that is not true. Okay, so what happens? All right, let's put up what happens. This is direct quote from the study. All right. So fat-free mass adjusted expenditure. Okay, obviously, if you're carrying more muscle, which is fat-free mass, muscle is fat-free, there's no fat in it, it's muscle. Uh, and it's fat-free mass, meaning it's either muscle or bone, actually, or water. Okay, fat-free mass, muscle, expenditure accelerates rapidly in neonates. That's children or babies or infants. Okay, so you need a lot of growth when you're little. So your metabolism speeds up because you're trying to grow, right? Now, it, it to about 50% above what uh, a, a normal adult values are. So about 50% more higher metabolism while you're in your growth stage until you reach adulthood, which is, they say, about 20 years for most people maturity. So once it gets to 20, from 20 all the way over to 60, your metabolism remains pretty much unchanged, even during pregnancy, which was actually pretty amazing to me. So all the time we reach adulthood, from 20 to 60, your metabolism is basically the same. Yes, it can minor fluctuate with more exercise, a different change of diets, different use of stimulants, stuff like that. Yes, slight changes, not significant enough to match, to cause um, significant changes in um, your body's ability to utilize energy or store it as body fat. Okay, all the way up to 60, and then it starts to decline after 60. Okay, so then you can say, oh, well, I'm, I'm 60, uh, my metabolism's declining. Okay, let's look at what the study actually says on people over 60. Boom, there it is. Um, after 60, it declines 0.7% per year. Now, for somebody eating a 2,400 calorie intake, which is the average uh, intake for um, an adult male, 2,400 calories, a healthy intake, I should say. Obviously, standard American men are eating way above that. But at 0.7%, that would equal about 17 calories per year. You could, you could throw a couple ice cubes in your water every day and burn more calories than that because the body has to heat up the body. If you drink in ice cold water, your body actually burns up a, a few calories uh, through an uncoupling protein technique where your body just releases the calories as heat to warm the body back up when you're cold. Yeah, just get in, step into a, a, an ice cooled uh, room and your body will accelerate a little bit of calorie burning, but only small, a few amount of calories. Heck, walking from your car into the gym and getting upstairs into the gym, walking up the stairs, you could burn about that many calories. So nothing it's nothing really 
that's how little it declines. So basically the change is insignificant and we should stop using my metabolism is slowing. That's why I'm gaining weight. No, you're gaining weight because you're eating too many calories or you're eating the wrong types of calories. Um, and here's uh, another good study that I'm going to post up in just a second, if I can find it real quick. I'll just actually talk about the study. Okay, great study that looked at, okay, if you ate the same amount of calories from fat and the same amount of calories from carbohydrates, which one actually caused more fat storage. Now, this is not surprising to me, but it is going to be surprising because it's the exact same amount of calories. You think, oh, it's all about the calories, calories in, calories out, right? No, the exact same amount of calories from carbs or from fat and fat cause more fat storage. So why is that? Well, they proposed in the study that the body, when it has carbs present, actually promotes the use of, of, of different enzymes and different ways to utilize that energy. So it stimulates increase of insulin so that the carbs get into the cells and insulin sensitivity so the cells actually suck up carbs. Carbs and sugars, all carbohydrates, increase insulin sensitivity. Fat decreases insulin sensitivity. So why is that? So carbs, when they're present, want to get inside of the cell. So the cell makes it more sensitive. So it sucks up those carbs so that you can use them for energy. That's awesome. When you get fat, it goes into the cell. Now that fat sits there because it's a lot of calories, almost two and a half times more calories than carbs. And now the body shuts down the receptability of insulin because it says we've got a ton of calories in here we got lots of fat in here we're slow to break this down that's going to take us a while so no more no more energy input into the cell that's called insulin sensi insensitivity it's inhibiting the body's ability to dock insulin so it can pull in more calories more um, caloric load, whether it from carbs or Now, when sugar comes along after you've already put fat in the cell, well, then the sugar can't get into the cell. And that's what that high bl blood sugar content is. But it's not the sugar's fault. If you put the sugar in there with an empty cell, it'll soak right up immediately and be utilized. It's the fat getting into the cell that does that. So fat causes more fat storage and causes greater insulin insensitivity, which is leading to type 2 diabetes. So that is key when you're looking at, no, it's not your metabolism changing. It's the amount of calories that you're eating compared to the amount of uh, exercise or energy output, how much energy you're using compared to how much energy you're inputting, but even carbs and fat at the exact same amount of caloric energy Fat actually stores to a greater level than carbohydrates. I'm going to put that study as well in the comments section. So if you have any questions about that, or you can read the study yourself, I'll put it in there later. It'll also be on the post later as it's posted up later in the week. And you can check it out on YouTube too, at Clean Machine Online at YouTube. So it's also, you can see this at Clean Machine Fit on Facebook and on Jeff Palmer, name right there on the screen for you. Uh, and uh, you can see that there too as well. I'm gonna be posting studies like this because this is helpful information that we can all use to make better decisions about what we can do to improve our overall health and fitness, right? I want to give you empowering in this, uh, decisions, and I want to help you remove those excuses from your brain. Oh, it must be my metabolism slowing down. No, it is not. And the science proves that. It's not metabolism. And if we can eliminate those excuses, if we can get them out of our mind saying, no, that's not true. I'm not buying that excuse anymore. Then we can get to the real source of the problem, which is I got to look at what I'm eating. I got to look at my exercise. I got to increase my calorie output and decrease my calorie intake. It's not my age. 
It's not my metabolism. It's what I'm eating and what I'm doing is exercise. And that what you are eating, fat to carbs is important, especially if they're complex carbs, because that's gonna give you polyphenols and uh, other metabolites that will help you utilize those calories where fat does not do that. Fat does not create metabolites that help you use those calories, not like the polyphenols, the fiber, uh, the butyrates, the antioxidants, the, all the vitamins that come along with those complex carbohydrates that are found in plants. This is information you can use so you understand why you're not getting results on your body in the gym or through your diet and exercise programs. I want you to succeed. That's why I come up with these products to try to give you the best nutritional support get the results that you're looking for both in the gym and through your nutrition and live a long and prosperous healthy life i hope you enjoyed this one let's stop with the excuses be honest to yourself you can lie to yourself but your body doesn't take that lie doesn't accept that lie as the truth it operates on the truth and now that we have the science and the facts to back it up let's lose those excuses and lose the weight we don't want gain the weight we do want, and enjoy life to its fullest. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, smash that thumbs up button, and also subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. This helps us get better rankings on YouTube, help get more of this information so we can all help everyone else enjoy the benefits of health. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next week.